there, and welcome to the award-winning Ed Brown Show. I'm your host, Kamaria Richmond, and we are here today with Larry LaRose, and we are having a good time. Uh, Larry is a performance coach, an award-winning actor, and speaker, and he really helps busy professionals use acting, acting skills to do, I mean, so many wonderful things with their business, really teach them how to grow their business as well. And so we're doing something different and unique today. So we are. Tell us all about it. Okay. Well, <laughs> today we are going to talk about my premier workshop, Yes. which is my um, acting for busy business professionals workshop. Actually, it's my introduction to acting for busy professionals. Uh, this workshop um, is really interesting because it touches on all the basic disciplines of the acting profession, so to speak, okay. or the acting world. Uh, and it gives a basis or a foundation to build later on into a professional career, into uh, business presentations, into speeches that you may want to influence the, your audience, okay. um, anything that you would use in your business life. I, I say that everything that an actor does, an executive needs. Interesting. Yeah, an okay. executive needs to be able okay. to communicate clearly. That's where a good diction comes in, right. which is combination of vowels and consonants and how, how you use your mouth and how you use um, even down to your breathing, which most people don't do well. Right. So, but I knew when I developed this workshop that someday I was going to want to reach to a bigger audience. Mm -hmm. Now, I've done smaller workshops. I usually do about 20 people at a time okay. because I like to give personal attention to all the people that are, are in the workshop, especially when we're doing it physically. Because that my this workshop can take up to five hours when we when we when we're doing it live, so that we can touch on all these basic disciplines, so that you actually have a foundation that you can build on once you leave. Okay. But we also said, well, what I really wanted to reach a bigger audience. So the last time that I did the workshop, we actually took the time to videotape it, and we video well not videotape it, but we actually took time to film it. Okay. And so it's, it's a, we're going to put it up online. We're going to make it available to the masses. So you're actually going to be able to go in and develop these disciplines on your own time. Um, and you're going to be able to start building this foundation to do either to be a better presenter, a better influencer, a better salesperson, whatever it is that your professional life needs. Actually, can actually help you be a better parent, too, because I've actually gotten that response from uh, a couple of engineers at NASA who actually said they changed the way they communicated with their children based on this workshop. And this is really about influence. This is really about influence. It's about, um, it's about clarity. Okay. It's about purpose. Mm -hmm. It's about um, empathy. Um, I think one of the one of the biggest sales gurus, and I can't remember who it was right now, said, if you can build empathy with your customer, you can get them to buy anything. I believe that. It is. <laughs> I it believe is. that. If yeah. you can get to your customer's yeah. empathy, if you can understand their empathy, understand, if you can understand right. where they are and what they need and what they want, actually, it's more what they want than what they need. Mm -hmm. If you try to sell people what they need, it's not always going to be successful. If you sell them what they want, if you build that empathy and you actually right. know what they want, that sale becomes easy. Right. So that's that's part of the whole acting thing is getting is, is developing empathy for your customer, empathy for your client. It can make a big difference in how effective you are as a salesperson and also how, how effective you are as a leader. If you can build empathy for your employees as a leader, if you can understand where they are, what motivates them, what their wants are, what their needs are, if you can actually touch on all of that, you're going to be a more effective leader, you're going to be a more effective salesperson, you're going to be a more effective presenter. Right. All these things can happen. Absolutely. And this, this workshop actually helps you build that foundation to start working on those things. Okay. And of course, I can take, take you further, but this is like your, your jumping off point. So. What we did for you today was that we brought a little clip of me teaching actually a Toastmasters group, and which is all business professionals. Okay. 
<clears throat> they're all there for the same reason. They want to make their presentations better and more effective. So I taught them some of these acting skills, and we have it here in a clip for you. So let's take a look at it, shall we? I am from the old school of acting. We learn how to project. And I learned it years ago. Not a room like this, but a room when there's a thousand people in the room. They still need to be able to. Now they use microphones. They're all pansies. <laughs> all right? They don't come from the old school. But anyway, some, would you like to learn to do that? Yeah. Yes. yes. Okay, so I'm going to teach you a couple of techniques very quickly where you can learn to do that. But at least you'll get the idea. Does that work for everybody? Yes. Okay, great. Everybody stand up. <clears throat> all right, now. Part of projection is making your mask vibrate. All right, there are things that you can do to make that happen. If you've ever heard of people blowing their voice, because they carry their voice in their throat, the idea to longevity, either in singing, acting, speaking, is to get out of your throat and into your head. So I'm going to teach you a couple of things. First of all, <clears throat> when you study singing, you learn about vowels. Okay, vowel placement in the mask, which is your face, is very specific when you take some singing lessons, depending on who you talk to. Now, <clears throat> remember, this is my theory. This is what I learned from people. There's, there's, if there's 100 voice teachers out there, they have 100 different methods. All right, this is a method I learned that works for me. Right, if you go talk to somebody else, they're probably going to tell you he doesn't know what he's talking about. And that's fine. Okay, but for today, since I'm up front, I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> okay? All right, so the first, the first vowel is an ah vowel. Ah. 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 Okay, now you're doing it all wrong. <clears throat> Here's the thing. But most of you are taught, ah, down in there. Okay? <clears throat> what happens is, now, the other thing is standing up straight. Even if you're if you're reading notes, you know, if you've got a, if you got a speech and you're reading from notes, and notes are okay, all right? Don't read them, don't read them down here. Okay, you're cutting off your air throat right up in here, right? And you're directing everything down there and it's all caught up in here, okay? Don't do that. Right? Either hold it up here so that you can stand up straight, because there's a natural flow in your body, the way the air moves. And if you do this, you're cutting it off. Don't do that. All right? Stand as straight as you possibly can. Now, that doesn't mean you can't move. You can stay that way when you're moving. You just got to know that you're moving. All right? So that doesn't mean that, that you don't want to get it caught in your mouth. Now, the ah vowel is in the top of your mouth. It comes from the diaphragm. How many of you have heard that from music teachers, right? Diaphragm, OK? It's that big muscle right here. All right? You're going to push. All right, it's right below, it's right in here, it's right below your lungs, you're gonna push with that, and you're gonna drive that air up to the top of your mouth, and the ah should bounce off the back roof of your mouth. Are you ready to try it? Yes. Hey, yeah, it's, I can tell right now, he's like, I'm scared to death. I, there's no way I can do it. You, right, I can tell, right, right? Don't worry, you're not alone. There's a lot of you, I see the faces, okay? All right, so, are you ready? Here we go. Push the diaphragm go. Good. Good. Did you feel the push? Yeah. Yeah? Could you feel it? All right? Most of you did this. You went, oh, and your, your shoulders came up and kissed your ears, and which is good. That means something's going on, okay? But you should actually do it so that the, you know. The voluntary stuff is doing it, not the involuntary. Okay? But that's okay. It's a good start. Okay? It means you got energy. And energy is good. Energy comes from breath. Yoga people? Yeah? Energy comes from breath? Correct? There we go. Same thing for an actor. Energy comes from breath. All right? So that's an ah. Ah. The next sound is an e sound. Now, you study the foreign language, especially the romance languages, you know that I, in a foreign language, is an e. Correct? Like in French, Italian, right? It's e, e, e. Okay? Now, here's the thing I'm going to teach you placement. All right? When you are doing an E, your tongue squeezes up against the roof of your mouth. 
and you're just using the diaphragm again, you squeeze the E up to the roof of your mouth. And out that little opening in the top. Everybody feel it? All right? Just do it. Just feel it up in there. Push with the diaphragm. Okay. Now, hold it. Push it with your breath and hold it exactly where I told you to put that thumb. You ready? Okay. As you squeeze harder with the tongue, the higher the E will go. Great. Okay. All right. I'm going to teach you one more. One more. And this is the O. The O was taught to me by a soprano at the Tri Cities Opera. She was a big woman. Uh, and she was awesome. And when she opened her mouth, people froze. All right? And she told me, Larry, yes. that O has to be in the top of your head. You need to push that O right up through the top of your mouth, into the top of your head, and out of your skull. All right, and that's what you taught me. I said, I'll never forget it because I thought if I didn't do it right, she's gonna kill me. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, so the O, just imagine a big O coming from here all the way up into your head and out the top of your head. You gotta use your imagination. This is visualization. Okay, just like when you're done with me, you're gonna go out and craft these stories and you're gonna visualize them for your audience because they want. If you act your stories instead of just tell them, it'll be far more effective. Okay, let's go. Oh, are you ready? Oh, oh, oh. oh. Trust me, I've never described that. <laughs> now, here's, here's the thing about this. This is everything that you can practice on your own. All right? These are just these are little exercises. If you do them and you keep doing them, eventually they will find their way into your language. In other words, 
You'll be able to be heard and understood because your diction will be that good. But you need to practice. All right? If you sing, remember that the vowels carry the song, all right? but the consonants are what carry your words. Okay, so if you're singing, it's a e i o you. you. Alright, that carries. Alright, but consonants are what keeps your words clear. I'll give you an example. I was in a show once, and one of my co-stars had her voice teacher come. To, and I was singing in the show. And she came backstage during the intermission. She walked right up to me and she says, You're amazing. You're singing out there, and I can understand every word that you say. I was like, well, yeah, it's kind of tough to do that. You know, can't, can't, don't most of the people on stage, and then I realized, no, they don't. You know, when a, when a singer gets carried away by the, by the vowels, you can't understand what they're doing. I'll give you an example. Somebody who gets carried away with the vowels. Who knows who Sylvester Stallone is? <laughs> Right? Right? I give you a speech from Sylvester's movie, his first, first blood movie. Okay? He did his big monologue at the end. Are you ready? Let me give you real acting here. Are you ready? Yeah. Here's his speech. All vowels. No consonants. Well, that's, here's your example. <laughs> Doesn't stop them from making a lot of money. <laughs> right? But there's your example of vowels getting out of hand. He has no consonants. So you can't understand what he's saying. Now, that clip is the basics of vowels, and it actually started to get into the consonants of how you speak properly. It's a really interesting thing because people don't think about vowels and consonants. You probably did when you were a kid mm -hmm. and you were learning the alphabet and they, they taught you vowels and they taught you consonants, but you don't know the importance of doing those things well and how they can actually um, influence your communication skills okay. and influence the way people respond to you or the way people react to you based on how well you communicate. Well, that's very interesting. Okay. I mean, that is really interesting. Yeah, so that's, that's your basics. You start with the vowels. Okay. And then you move into the consonants, and then the, the other areas that we touch on during the workshop are how those things, again, are communication skills. Also, when you speak well, your relationships with people get better because there's clarity. Absolutely. There's clarity there. And once you start becoming clear with people, you understand them, they understand you, now you can start building out a relationship. Mm -hmm. You can start building on the empathy, okay? And again, once you know how to do the vowels, do the consonants. Next thing is the how you put your words together and how you put your sentences together. And that builds influence. Because you okay. pick the right word. I, I like to say, Shakespeare picked every word he wrote. It wasn't, he didn't write a sentence by accident. Okay. He planned every word in the sentence, which is why he's lasted over 500 years. He's lasted because he picked every word. Every word, every word had a purpose. If you can do the same thing in your presentations, if you can do the same thing with the way you present, the way you put words together, the way the sentences flow, if you can do all that like he did it, you'll become an instant relationship builder, an instant influencer, okay? okay? Next thing is performing skills. Stories can be flat. Right. You can tell a story, it'll be flat, it'll be dead, it'll be whatever. If you don't tell it well, people won't remember it. People won't get into the story. You won't make that emotional contact. You won't have any influence. Right. So performing skills come after that. Story building, which I've talked about before. You have to build a story. You can't just tell it. You can just tell it, but again, it'll flat. Right, it's flat. It's flat. Mm -hmm. If you build a story, build the emotion, build the, the words themselves, build the sentences, build the emotion you want the audience to have from the story, they'll never forget you. Memorable. And memorable. Mm -hmm. They'll never forget mm -hmm. you. Never forget the story, never forget the lesson. All of these are the kinds of skills that all executives need. It's the same thing that an actor does. Mm -hmm. Now, to prove to you that anybody can do this, yes. I'm going to show you how to do some of these vowel exercises right now, right here. Okay, I'm and ready. I, I think you're gonna, I think you're gonna <laughs> feel an improvement 
just from what we're going to do here. Okay. At least we're going to try. Okay. Okay? So, if you look down the clip, you realize that, that the first vowel we talk about is an ah, which is an A sound. Mm -hmm. right? If you're from where, where I'm from, northern New York, there's an A ah sound up there. It's a very lazy A. Uh -huh. Gets in the way when you're speaking. Gives you an accent. Uh -huh. Accent. Right. <laughs> you can hear it, right? <laughs> Flat A. Right. Okay. okay. So what I teach my students is to round out those vowels. Okay. Now, you know where your diaphragm is? Mm -hmm. Right below the rib cage. Right. Okay. Huge muscle right there. Now, everything that you do as far as breath, because breath is life. Breath is speaking. So, and, and yoga people will tell you breath is everything. Right. Uh, so everything that you do when you're performing or when you're presenting should be done with the diaphragm and the breath. I swear, the biggest cure for stage fright is to know what you're doing properly and concentrating on it. Okay. So when you're presenting, you don't have time to have stage fright. If you're thinking about breathing properly, if you're thinking mm -hmm. about putting your vowels and your consonants where they belong, you don't have time to be stage fright. You know, you don't have time for stage fright right. because you're busy trying to do things properly. Right. So, right. deep breath. Now the ah sound comes out of the, and, the, and again, the other thing is to get these sounds out of your throat and into your head. Really interesting, okay. all right? Because vowels should be in the mask of the face. The mask is the face, basically. Okay. But, you know, your head's full of holes. All right, there's all kinds of sinuses and all these other holes that are in your head. And the idea is to get those sounds up into that mask and make it vibrate. Right? Okay. Greatest story was, I don't know how many people out there might know who uh, Robert Goulet was. But Robert Goulet was a baritone singer who had a big resonating voice. And they said when he made his mask vibrate, he made the whole audience's mask vibrate because he was so good at it. So, but anyway, the eye comes from down here, okay. and it should actually, it should come up to the top of the roof of your mouth, and it should bounce off the back of your mouth. Are you ready to try? Okay. First of all, let's just do an ah. Ah. Uh, okay. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, ah. Uh, ah. Uh. Now, push with the diaphragm, and push it up to the top of your mouth. Go, ah. Uh, ah. Uh, ah. Uh, ah. Uh, ah. Uh. Uh. Ah. Now we're going to push it up and we're going to sustain it. Are you ready? Okay. Take a deep breath. Sit up straight. Push from the diaphragm and go. Oh. Oh. Do you feel it in here Whew. where your nostrils are? It's a lot of work. It is, isn't it? It's a lot of work. Yes. It's a lot of work. Yes. It's yes. a lot of work to get it out of your throat Ooh. and into your head. Mm -hmm. And you can do this with all the vowels. Okay. The E is at the top of your, in the roof of your mouth. You push your tongue up against the roof of your mouth. That's for an E sound, which in a Romance language like French or, or Italian or um, French Italian, uh, what's the other one? It's not German. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> one of the Romance languages, an I is pronounced as an E. Okay. So you put it, you, and you push up against the roof of your mouth with, with your tongue, and you squeeze out the E. It's like E sound. Mm -hmm. But it's really, it's a lot of work. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. A lot. And the ooh sound it's is in the front of, of your mouth. Okay. So what I teach my students is to put all those things in your head. Now, if you practice these things over and over again in your everyday life, they'll just start to take place. Right. All of a sudden, you'll be speaking, and it'll be in your head. The, the ooh will be in the front of your mouth. The ah will come up to the top of your mouth. The e will squeeze out of the top. The o will come out the top of your head. It's all these things that go into doing this. And these are the things that we teach in the workshop. So that, and you start building on these things and make them part of your everyday life. Now, all of a sudden, your diction is clear. People can understand you. Your communication is coming. Right. Okay? So that's the kind of things. And then we moved on to, like, the movement. We move on to presence building skills. We move on to improv. How do you think on your feet? Executives have to think on their feet right. almost every day. Right. So these are the kind of skills that we build on during this workshop. When you, when you walk out of this workshop, you may have a completely different idea of how to do your job, how you're going to communicate, how you're going to speak. All these things can be affected by 
the performance, these performance skills in this workshop. Mm -hmm. And I love they're called performance skills. I think that they're performance skills. Yeah. Um, uh, to me, um, a skillful actor knows how to perform. Right. And right. I think by the same token, a skillful employee or a skillful leader knows how to perform. My workshop will teach you that. And what's the name of the workshop? The name of the workshop, again, is an introduction to acting for busy business professionals. I love that. And people can reach you by? People can reach me on, and you can see me on Facebook. You can see me on LinkedIn. It's Larry at LarryLaRose.com. My website is LarryLaRose.com. Just remember the word, Larry LaRose, just like the flower, but I'm not that sweet. <laughs> This is great. I wish you the best on success. That's really fun. And it I know is that fun. that's a lot of work. And if you are a professional and you really want to grow your business, you definitely, definitely want to take the course with Larry LaRose. Larry, thank you so much for being on the award-winning Show. You're entirely welcome. I hope you got something out of it. I did. I did. And we'll see you next time.